Let's talk about gangs. Already by somebody, most, a lot of jury members are predisposed to think that a gang member is a bad person. That's you right. represent gang members, don't you? That's right. So how do you select a jury that's going to be fair? And second of all, what do you look for with the kind of person that you select on that jury? It's tough, Steve. It's really tough. I practice out of Orange County, and uh, Orange County is so-called law and order kind of county. It's tough to say you're going to find a jury pool that's going to be at least fair, coming yeah. there with an open eye. So it's tough. Uh, what you have to do is you have to explain to the jury what a gang is. As you said, we have gangs and then we have gangs. Just because these people might technically fit into the framework of what the statute calls or what the police officers call a gang, don't treat them in the same light as you would a gang member who's out there dealing drugs, not working, sleeping till 12, going out there, shooting up, you know, places. Mm -hmm. That's what's got to be getting across to the jury. How do you define gangs, per se? Well, that's the interesting uh, part. M most people, when they hear gangs, they immediately assume that you're talking about the Bloods or the Crips or some of the more major Mexican gangs. And, mm -hmm. and that is a major problem. I understand that is a major problem. But also, you have a lot of other groups of kids. And I say kids, I really mean kids. Kids of between 15 to maybe 20 years old. Uh, they live on a particular street, and they get together, they hang out, and they call themselves a gang. Um, they're not what we used to call like a club. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Now the only problem is a lot of these kids are, are being raised in, 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 in a lower class neighborhoods. They don't mm -hmm. have the finances. And so instead of having a club and getting together and do this stuff that we might have used, uh, they, they sit around and they might smoke, smoke pot and they might uh, actually you know, talk about the other things that, that eventually leads into criminal behavior. Yeah. The, the, the bad part of it, or the scary part of it, is some of them actually take it a step further and do engage in acts of, you know, attempted murder or murder or robbery. But a lot of them don't. A lot of them are just part of that group. Right. One of the problems that when they do commit crimes is they have gang enhancement Absolutely. laws, don't they? Absolutely. So where you might get three years or something, it's triple that, isn't it? That, that's exactly the problem. But, Many of these kids actually hold jobs, yeah. dead-end jobs, you know, working at McDonald's or working here and there. Uh, many of them hold two jobs, live at home with their parents because they can't afford anything else. But you're right, they get exposed to this lifestyle, and unfortunately they have such readily access to guns that they might engage in, in an act that because of that gun, immediately they're talking about a 10-year enhancement maybe, and the fact that they're not tagged a gang you're talking about another in hand. Yeah, and the problem with all that is you took a kid that might have not been bad, you're now putting him into a system, and it's pretty well guaranteed that he's going to be involved with crime the rest of his life. Absolutely. And actually, that will be a badge of honor for him now. Now when he comes out, by the time he comes out, maybe he's 20, now the 15-year-old kids are going to look up to him and say he was in that. You know, it's, it turns into a vicious circle. You've had a lot of cases dismissed, and I think I, I want to emphasize that not only do you win cases, but you get them dismissed, which is even better than winning them because you don't have to waste your time going to trial. Well, uh, we're proud of the work we do. We really are proud of the work we do. And uh, I'm proud of the fact that we have had some major cases dismissed. We've had triple mur murder cases dismissed, which is not unheard of, but it's not common by any means. What makes a good trial lawyer? A lot of things. The first thing is you, you, you really just got, got to be interested in what you do. You got to be interested in what you do. You got to keep up with the trends. Every day there's a new case that comes out. And mm -hmm. if you're a trial lawyer, objections you make at the time of trial are very important to preserve your client's right. And if you're not up to date with the trends and the new decisions coming down by the Supreme Court or Courts of Appeals, you can miss, you can miss topics which are gone at that point. So you got to keep yourself up to date. Yeah. And somehow you got to establish some kind of rapport with the jury. And that's, that's tough sometimes. Uh, it takes practice. It really takes practice to make sure the jury doesn't hate the lawyer more than they're going to hate the defendant.